Good morning again. I'm Deborah McGoy, Vice President of University Relations here at UHD. And I have the privilege of working alongside President Blanchard and other esteemed UHD colleagues to produce these important events. Today's event is the 14th installment of the University of Houston Downtown's President Lecture Series. So let's give that a round of applause. 14th installment. Now, as many of you know, the President's Lecture Series brings together the university community to reflect on topics that are relevant and important to all we serve. Today's topic is especially important, creating strategic partnerships for a vibrant downtown community. That will give us the opportunity to hear from three esteemed panelists on how we can build a stronger strategic alliance and form that between our livable and user-friendly, to create a, a livable and user-friendly downtown. Now, the University of Houston downtown prides itself on being an institution where ideas and perspectives are welcomed and shared. Through these platforms, we create the opportunity for those in our campus community and the community at large to listen and to interact with policymakers and leaders of industry, as well as with local and national experts, so that we are better informed and equipped to take on the challenges of an ever-changing city and world. Today, our three esteemed panelists will discuss the synergy created when local government the business community and higher education build strategic alliances to form that vibrant downtown. The outcomes are a win-win for community engagement, workforce development, and sustainability. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jonathan Schwartz. <laughs> He has a fan club, we see. <laughs> he is Dean of UEHD's College of Public Service and the moderator of today's discussion. Here's a little bit about Dr. Schwartz and his background. He has served as the president of an American Psychological Association division. He's associate or has been associate dean of graduate studies at the University of Houston's College of Education and associate dean of research at New Mexico State University. Dr. Schwartz is a fellow of the American Psychological Association and was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award by the American Psychological Association for his work in prevention. As one who served previously as a co-founder and executive director of the Advancing Community Engagement and Service Institute and as the lead for the University of Houston's Educational Third Ward Initiative, Dean Schwartz is an ideal moderator for today's important discussion. With all that said, Dean Schwartz, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much, Ms. McGaw. Uh, so I am going to, it's my pleasure to be moderating today. It's a very exciting panel, and I'm going to be briefly introducing our esteemed panelists, and then we're going to get right down to the questions. So. Uh, buckle your seatbelts, it should be a good one today. Uh, it's, so it's truly my pleasure to introduce the panelists for our conversation on creating strategic partnerships for a vibrant downtown community. Elected in December 2015 and overwhelmingly re-elected in December 2019, the Honorable Sylvester Turner is Houston's 62nd mayor. Due to term limits, Mayor Turner's time in office will end January 2nd, 2024. After two successful four-year terms, during which he forged effective public-private partnerships and expertly managed significant challenges, including budget deficits, homelessness, natural disasters, and the global COVID-19 pandemic. In the face of these challenges, Mayor Turner repeatedly passed balanced budgets within the city's fiscal constraints. His One Safe Houston initiative successfully decreased the year-to-year -year number of homicides and overall violent crime rate, and his climate action plan, the first of its kind in Houston, has made our city a leader in the global energy transition. Mayor Turner's accomplishments are too many to share during our short time together. He is a prolific, nationally recognized leader, and we are honored to have him with us today. 
Thank you, Dane. So, Mayor Turner, thank you for your presence with us today and all your dedication to the welfare of Houston and the University of Houston. Thank you. Thank you all for having me today. Thank you. Uh, Next, I'm going to introduce Chris Larson. Uh, Chris Larson is the president and CEO of Central Houston Incorporated. Mr. Larson earned an MPA, MPA from North Carolina State University and has held positions on both the public and private sides of community leadership including past service as president and CEO for downtown organizations in Raleigh, North Carolina and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Additionally, he served as vice chair of the International Downtown Association's executive committee and is a current chair elect. The IDA awarded four pinnacle awards to Mr. Larson's project in the fields of leadership, planning, advocacy and marketing. Well respected in the business industry, Mr. Larson was also a Daniel Rose fellow through the Rose Center for Public Leadership. Welcome, Mr. Larson. It's indeed glad to have you here today. Thank you very much, John. And last but not least, uh, I'd like to welcome our president of the University of Houston downtown, Dr. Lauren Blanchard, who serves as the seventh president of the University of Houston downtown. Dr. Blanchard is steering UHD towards becoming the standard for urban public institutions dedicated to the needs of our community. The strategic plan with student success at this number one priority outlines UHD's approach to becoming a university focused on nurturing talent, generating knowledge, and driving socioeconomic mobility for a just and sustainable future. Before taking the presidential seat here at UHD, Dr. Blanchard served as Executive Vice Chancellor for Academics and Student Affairs at California State University and as Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs at Xavier University in New Orleans. Dr. Blanchard, I'm honored to serve as moderator for today's event. Thank you. So first, thank you all for joining us for this critical conversation. We're going to dive right into the questions because we have brief time together, but we are going to save time for questions at the end, so start thinking of your questions. Uh, The first question is for everyone. Post-COVID, what new challenges exist downtown, and what is the role of strategic partnership in envisioning and building a sustainable future for downtown Houston that addresses these challenges? I guess I start. (laughs) <laughs> uh, number one, let me, just, let me just go to the latter part of the question first. Uh, without strategic partnerships, you can't make it happen. Um, you need everyone. Collaboration is the key. Partnership is the key. Um, we have the pleasure of working with uh, Central Houston, downtown Houston with Chris, and of course working with UHD, with Dr. Blanchard. So um, uh, it's critically important. I have my director of uh, youth en- uh, education and youth engagement, um, for example, we do internships with UHD at the city of Houston. That's a big, big plus uh, for us. My chief of staff is here, Mumble at Hunter. Uh, so in terms of collaborating with the different the business community, that's key. Uh, just this morning, Chris and I was together at a, a press conference, uh, getting ready for the holiday season, and we are joining together to light up downtown Houston, okay? Um, after COVID, well, during COVID, Everybody went to their respective locations, home, you name it, and things were very, very quiet uh, downtown. Uh, Post-COVID, in part, we're trying to bring people back, uh, get people back into their uh, respective businesses, because quite frankly, without the people, the restaurants can't function. So in order for the restaurants to remain open, to be vibrant, you have to work very closely with the business community and with people themselves to get them back. And then we have thousands of people who are now living downtown. So quite frankly, we have a community of people living downtown. So the parks and the green space. Uh, not too long ago, we just redid uh, well, the, the Lynn Wyatt Plaza. That was done in collaboration with the business community and the philanthropic community, the theater district, and you name it. So you need all of these component parts working together to create a very vibrant, dynamic downtown. And the Gators are very much a part of that. Um, So uh, we just want to work very intentionally with all these component parts to build a dynamic downtown. As go downtown, so will go the rest of the city of Houston. 
couldn't have said it better myself, Mayor Turner. Um, Chris Larson with Central Houston, and, and for those who aren't aware, we also manage the, the downtown management district as well as the downtown redevelopment in TERS 3. Um, so we've been able to lead a number of different projects to help to improve downtown, but um, I am struck by the similarity between COVID and its impact to downtown and really the, the motivating point in time for why Century Houston was even founded. So in the early 1980s, there was a terrible oil bust uh, in the city of Houston. Price of oil collapsed and downtown lost 40% of its employment overnight. Um, at the time, downtown was a single use, single purpose place. It existed to be a central business district. You've probably heard that term before. Um, and that's why it was. But literally, and you'll hear this from folks that have been around for a while, the, you know, after the lights went down, the streets rolled up and, and everybody left downtown for the night. And for 40 years now, we've been working on diversifying who downtown is for. Um, and, and that means everything from uh, destination drivers, so things like ballparks and arenas and convention centers and hotels. Uh, more, more recently, it's thinking about how to incentivize and deliver residential housing to downtown to make downtown more of a neighborhood. Um, in 2012, before we launched our downtown living initiative, downtown Houston had the lowest residential uh, density of any major city in Texas. Um, and so since then, we've delivered over 5,000 residential units to downtown to really help to build a neighborhood, but we still have a ways to go on that front. Fast forward to COVID, um, and now we're dealing with about 66% return to office, right? So about 33%, 34% of Houstonians are not coming back into the office on a five-day-a-week basis, which is very similar to that motivating event back in 1982, which is really what brought Central Houston together. So in some ways, the challenge of today is not very different than the challenge that we went through decades ago. And the solution remains the same as well. It's really thinking about downtown as more than simply a place for business. It's also a place for uh, recreation, visitation. It's a place to call home. Um, and uh, we're gonna be revealing some data uh, next week. I'll go ahead and tease it a little bit, but um, we now have more visitors in downtown on a daily basis than we have employees. So when you look at the share of, of people that in, are in downtown Monday through Friday, 53% of humans that are in downtown are not there for, for work. They are there because they are coming downtown for dinner, they're coming downtown to watch a Rockets game, they're coming downtown for, uh, to participate in a convention. Uh, they might just be there for a, you know, a staycation. Um, and so in some ways, you know, we continue to think about how we diversify who downtown is for, and, and, and we, we have to think about adaptation. I think that that's the critical piece of where we go next from here, right? And I think that that is ultimately where your question is, is, is if we still have about 5 million square feet of obsolete office product in downtown. This is space that really pulls down our occupancy rates. Um, that is, is not marketable, it's not of interest for any kinds of businesses, and we have to find a way to facilitate that transition into other uses for other reasons, whether it's a affordable housing or it could be other institutional uses. These are primary moments to use existing built space for other purposes to continue to expand who downtown is for on a daily basis. So far, we've heard uh, from our panelists that retail spending uh, has been problematic since, uh, the, the, since COVID. Uh, we've also heard about the office occupancy piece, but also public transportation. These are like three measures uh, that have already been uh, re researched very carefully to make a determination of whether or not downtown Houston is coming back as strongly as suburban Houston and also relative to other major cities. Uh, there are those recommendations that you see out there, uh, as you just heard Chris Larson mention, about how do we transform some of those spaces uh, into residential areas um, and also recreational areas. Um, I say that, you know, one of the things that when we talk about the whole partnership piece is really understanding that how can we better find ways uh, for each of the partners within the business community to understand ourselves as being extensions of one another. Um, and so what I can say, uh, Mayor and Chris, that you know, for higher education here at the University of Houston downtown, we are 14,000 students strong here. We have come back. 
um, and even in terms of our full-time students, uh, that we've got the vast majority uh, of our students now are, uh, are full-time, um, and that more importantly, you'll find very easily as well that when you look at our faculty and staff base, we've got about 1,500 faculty and staff, majority of them who come to work here on a daily basis. So why do I bring that point up? I bring it up because if we see each other as extensions of one another, then certainly the retail piece and, and going out to eat on a daily basis should not necessarily be problematic. We should be finding ways that we can make that natural connection. Obviously at the surface level, what comes to mind right away is a, a discount program. You know, that a UHD students, you come and eat at our place and you get a 5% discount or whatever the case is. That's at the surface level but also just recognizing as well how essential it is for uh, our students to be engaged in experiential learning. So a lot of these businesses that we've got here that we really do want them to recruit our students, not only for internships, I know students really want internships more than anything else, but also just for service learning because many of the businesses have a community arm to it because they want to make sure that they are working to uplift the surrounding community. And frankly, our students have the same goal and be able to work through businesses to uplift the community through our students is yet another way in order to do that. Uh, in addition to that, it really is understanding uh, ourselves, as you've mentioned, Mayor, uh, that we are in the theater district, we're in the performance arts district. Uh, we've got one of the best um, O'Kane uh, art galleries that you can ever possibly think of right here on our campus. Uh, we've got a thriving theater department that works very closely uh, with the Houston Opera. All of those things bring about a greater sense of synergy and energy that I believe would well serve this downtown community even further if we can find ways to deepen those kinds of relationships and, and opportunities. I, and I can add very, very quickly, I will say to you, uh, is that we are, in the, we are tr working to redesign uh, the inner core of city of Houston, and specifically even the downtown area, uh, to make it much more livable, to provide more outdoor space even for the restaurants, um, to make it um, more affordable, because yes, thousands of, of students and faculty at UHD, it's important for this core uh, to be affordable, to enable people to live downtown. Um, because what we are finding is that that younger community, um, they do want to live close to downtown. Um, so to make downtown more, much more vibrant um, and attractive, as Chris was saying, because you know, I grew up in this city, 5 o'clock, 5.30, gone. Uh, and we have worked to, in large part, to move to reverse that. Uh, but we have to work to make downtown even more vibrant. I will tell you that as we, as we, the work continues to take I-45 around uh, uh, downtown, that was, that's going to be a major step, and we got to do it right. And then Houston first. Um, billions of dollars will be spent over the next 10 years to change the front of the convention center to have a front door, outdoor, more, more park space, uh, more green space even than the downtown area to make it much more attractive for those who are working downtown and to attract people to even come downtown. And that's why the lighting, the holiday lighting, the decorative stuff, all are very important because you shouldn't have to go to the Galleria area or some other area. Downtown should be just as attractive as any other place uh, in the city of Houston. Thank you. Those are, those are great answers, and there's so much there to dig into, but my next question is going to be for Mr. Larson. Uh, and this is, I think, a natural transition from what we just talked about. Uh, from your perspective, how do we attract and, retain, attract and retain businesses in the downtown area? So this, uh, that question has multiple answers, and I think it depends on uh, what category of business we're talking about. So. Um, and I'm going to try to put them in two big buckets. So one would be occupants of office towers, so thinking about corporate businesses, and then maybe small businesses that would be more at the storefront level. Um, so thinking about the like eateries and, and cafes and, and uh, services and those kinds of things, because they're, they're different, there's different answers for that. 
the first I would say is um, on the office tenant side is that we, we really have to lean in on where we can be competitive um, and where we can see opportunities to further diversify from oil and gas. And when you look at the composition, the overall share of, of companies that call downtown home, uh, about 60% of all of our employees in downtown are still related to oil and gas business. And that's great for Houston because it remains a strength. It also makes us very, um, it, it challenges our ability to be resilient uh, when the price of oil drops. And that's, that's always been a challenge for us. So thinking about energy transition-based businesses I think is a real opportunity for us particularly when there are a lot of engineers right now that are migrating away from traditional oil and gas businesses and moving into more sustainably produced energy sources uh, because it more connects with who they are as a person, it connects with their value set. Um, and it turns out that those kinds of people are also very mindful about things like their own personal energy utilization, particularly when it talks about transportation and how they wanna get to work. Downtown Houston is the only employment center in the region that is connected to all forms of transportation. If your company is serious about providing options for its employees, downtown is the only answer for that. And that's something that I think that we have these competitive advantages that we've not really exploited from an economic development standpoint. Um, for something that would be true of, of both the small business and the large business, I, I think it comes back to that question about partnerships. And I neglected to say that you know, in, in 40 years of, of Central Houston's work in, 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 in really attracting some of the big boxes and the, and the game-changing elements in downtown, all of this work has been partnership. And it's been partnerships between the city, it's been partnerships like with multiple entities, private sector, philanthropy, and others to make these things happen. And so it is a strong foundation of partnership within the city of Houston. Almost everything requires a partnership, quite frankly. Um, but the city's role in, in many cases in economic development is, is just to make it as fair, clear, and predictable as possible. And, and that's, that's, that almost costs nothing, but it's a mindset um, of how the city's economic development team can approach opportunities to locate businesses in downtown is to make permitting processes, uh, make any access to incentive tools really as fair, clear, and predictable as possible so that you don't pick winners. You're really identifying how you open up the opportunity for anyone that wants to participate um, in that downtown economy. The third one I'll talk about is the small business, and that's really, that is going to be the hardest nut to crack, and, and that's for a couple of reasons, is that uh, when you look at who patronizes those small storefront businesses, generally speaking, they're going to be people who live closest to those businesses. Um, and so in real estate, there's an old adage that retail follows rooftops, right? And I go back to that notion of downtown is still emerging as an urban center, right? We have 11,000 residents in downtown right now, and that puts us probably barely in the top 50 for American cities for downtown residential population. We have a lot of work to do on that front. If, if we were really punching up to our weight, we would be at about 30,000 downtown residents, which would open up the opportunity for lots of other kinds of businesses that people are looking for. And so the most important thing that myself and my team can be doing is continuing to grow the residential base. And it's not as simple as just delivering new product. You have to develop a diversity of new product type to appeal to more people, because otherwise you are appealing to only a particular level of income earner, and there's only so many of those people to go around between multiple options uh, at that level. And so that means that we have to think about diversity of, of housing typology as well as the attainability of pricing um, and to be much more intentional in that space. And that means that you've got to really bring a lot of different tools to the table to be able to solve some of those puzzles. And each one of those projects is its own kind of puzzle, and you've got to layer on multiple capital sources to make that work. So, sorry, I'm getting way in the wonky weeds here, but um, but it really comes down to the you know the best thing that we can do for storefront businesses is continue to focus our, our growth on residential. You know, the, the other piece that I would say is that we also need to focus where we put our efforts in res in in retail in 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 storefronts, and and that's where downtown has a, a legacy of of land use planning that's a little sporadic and so you have all these different moments that are smeared all over the place uh, but we have these really opportunities on things like main street uh, main street is the only corridor in downtown that has continuity of storefront access and so that's called clustering uh, for storefronts that's where you can be successful because retail wants to be around other retail 
Uh, they need one another to be able to coexist so that they're not responsible for driving all of their own demand to their own front door. Uh, that's why one of the most important projects that we're working on in partnership with the city of Houston um, is this idea of a Main Street promenade. And so that would be permanently closing Main Street to cars um, and then creating a much more protected pedestrian environment that will connect basically the front door of UHD all the way down to the heart of downtown. And so that's something that we're working on right now and, and hopefully have uh, delivered before the World Cup. Thank, thank you, Mr. Larson. That's a great answer. Uh, I love the idea of a competitive advantage. I love that, that uh, frame of Houston in bringing industry here. And so I'm going to piggyback on your answer, Mayor Turner, uh, building on what Mr. Larson has shared. What, can, what key levers can the city pull to be a, a partner in bringing industry to Houston? Well, number one, is, it's important for um, um, downtown to be attractive. Quality of life is important. And that's why the work that we are do, doing collectively on addressing homelessness is important, okay? Um, so you want the area to be attractive. You want people to feel safe. You want it to be inviting. You want it to be beautiful, the quality of life, the parks, the green space, all of those are key ingredients um, to holding on to people downtown, attracting people downtown, and attracting businesses. I promise you that with the sports facility, redoing the, uh, let's say, the convention center area, the work that we're doing on Bagby. If you make this area attractive, then the employees of businesses want to be where the action is, okay? Because what's happening when Exxon moved out to the Woodlands, the, the older employees are staying out in the Woodlands area. The younger employees have elected to come closer to the downtown area and they would rather commute to Exxon, but they want to stay close to downtown, okay? So if you make the area downtown attractive, inviting, safe, with, a, with, a, with all of the amenities that people want, companies will go to where their employees want to be, okay? Um, we've been very fortunate to hold on to companies like Chevron that's committed to downtown. Uh, I agree with Chris. Chris, we need more retail in the downtown area. We need to have more people living in the downtown area. So the city's role is to work with, for example, the downtown management district and with all of the stakeholders to make this area more inviting, safe, and attractive. Uh, and you have to build a community downtown. So that's what we are seeking to do. It takes time, but I think we are moving. We're moving in the right direction. Thank you very much, Mayor Turner. The next question is for President Blanchard, and I think builds on that answer uh, in UHD's role in this. So Houston is the fourth largest city in America, and UHD is situated in the heart of the downtown business district. According to the Wall Street Journal, UHD leads America's best colleges in diversity. Given these facts about the University of Houston downtown, what role does UHD play in contributing to the city's economic impact in downtown Houston, and why is this important to the city's future? It's a good question. So in terms of uh, impact on the community, and I'm, I'm going to continue to say, use the term at the surface level, because I definitely want to be able to go a little deeper uh, as this conversation goes on. But at the surface level, uh, the last time that we were able to conduct a study to understand the University of Houston downtown's impact, economic impact on the local region was in 2019. And at that time, it indicated that this university had a $2 billion impact on the local economy, which is fantastic. I would imagine that as we are working to get the next economic impact study done, that it's going to be even stronger than at the $2 billion rate. But in addition to that, and, and that, that's, you know, there's a lot that goes into those studies in terms of determining what the measures are, but I don't necessarily want to go there now. I would say that, you know, if in real life terms today, if we're looking at um, the economic viability side, 
a lot of it has to do with the work that we're doing to make sure that we are increasing our students' ability to be more socioeconomically mobile. Um, and as you well know that uh, for University of Houston downtown, we rank number 11 uh, in the state with respect to socioeconomic mobility of our students. We're not stopping until we reach the number one mark because we know because we know that with the students that we serve, and uh, Chris and Mayor, I don't know if you realize this, but 70% of our students are first generation here at UHD, um, and 65% of them come from families who's, uh, who's below the, the poverty line. Um, and so this matters. This is hard work for us here at UHD. Uh, because we know that with the quality of educational experience that we're providing them, that our students really are able to climb quicker that socioeconomic ladder. And it's not just for the sake of themselves, but you, when you talk with our students, they're very clear about the fact it's the ability then to uplift their families and uplift their communities as well. And that really matters a lot. We also rank number five in the state with respect to salary impact of our graduates. Um, and so it means that those salaries without that degree uh, would certainly never be at the level that it is with the acquisition of either that baccalaureate or that master's degree. So all of that matters. But I want to go deeper just for a moment because, you know, really when we're talking about making that kind of impact on downtown Houston and the city's future, most everyone in the room uh, Mayor and Chris have heard me use the term about the importance of the University of Houston downtown being an anchor institution and trying to really understand what that means in terms of the anchor side. I would say to you that we have three parts of the anchor up here. Uh, the fourth that probably should be up here as well is health care. Uh, because when you look at what matters most in drawing industries to the to a, an urban area like Houston, uh, it's looking at the quality of healthcare, the quality of education, the quality of businesses that we've got, the synergy that happens amongst the three of those, but that more importantly, the productivity side in terms of research, in terms of workforce, uh, that, that those things actually matter tremendously in terms of the draw, not only for industry, but also for building a healthier future for the city of Houston. I can say to you that these two gentlemen that you see uh, seated to my left, they have done a phenomenal job in helping to build that. But I know that we still have room to go and that when I talk about the, the educational side, yes, I'm myopic in talking about University of Houston downtown because it's where my passion lies. But I know that we really have to be thinking how we work across education uh, both higher as well as K-12 to ensure that that quality component is there uh, and to also make sure that we understand our role with respect to ensuring that we are preparing people for jobs right here in the Houston area, but more importantly, preparing them to be leaders in those roles uh, to really help to continue to move this city forward. Thank you, President Blanchard. And the next question is for everyone, and it's, it's related to what President Blanchard just said. As each of you representing one of the major arms of being an anchor institution in Houston, uh, share what you see as means to st strategically partner in addressing community concerns such as public safety, homelessness, and beautification. And all of those things are integrated. Um, you know, we have, and the city of Houston, I would say, is the nation's model in addressing homelessness. Now, does that mean that every person that's living on the street is no longer there? No. But we're making significant progress. It is a very intentional, humanistic sort of model um, where we are providing housing uh, for people regardless of what their underlying ailments may be. Um, and so since 20. 11, 2012, we've reduced homelessness in the city by 65%. Um, so we're moving in the right direction. And that's why you have cities like Denver, LA, Chicago, 
New York that have all come to City of Houston in the last year or two to find out how, how we're doing it. So we need to do even more. Um, that's important. And it's not about um, pushing people somewhere else. It's about literally working to transition them into permanent supportive housing. And quite frankly, if we had about 500 units, single family units, for example, uh, in this city, you will see a significant more headway. We've set up this navigation center uh, that is working extremely well. Uh, and so you'll start seeing more of that. And we collaborate very closely with downtown Houston. So that's important, okay? Um, because you may not necessarily see the big encampments anymore, but we are seeing where there may be a person sleeping here or two or three sleeping there. And so um, our work is not yet done. On the beautification, that's the parks and the green space and everything else. Um, so you have, to, you have to do that portion. Um, and then I, I just want to go back to Dr. Blank, because while, while you were speaking, um, University of Houston downtown is an anchor. Uh, 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 business, educational institution in the downtown area. Houston as a municipality, our job is to complement, supplement all of these different units so that they can do what they do well. But I, as, as you were talking, Mr. President, I was saying, you know, um, there is so much potential with the UHD as it relates to the downtown community, so much potential. And if I had a little bit more time as mayor, what I would be saying is that I uh, work with you, with, with you and the UHD to assert yourself even more into the presence of downtown. Um, because UHD can be a driving force in the development of downtown. Um, and the potential is in this because many, if not most of your students, are coming from the Houston area and representing that diversity. And in large part, many, if not most, will still remain in the Houston area or they have a close relationship to the core of the city of Houston. So I just think there's a lot of potential for, for UHD to assert itself into the growth, the development of the downtown uh, community. So thank you, Mayor. I, I could not agree more in terms of, you know, the ability for us to find ways to assert ourselves more. You know, I, I'll, I'll make a connection. It might not be a fair one, but, you know, between beautification and wayfinding. Um, because, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing to know where you're going uh, in the downtown area. And, and that really is, I, I know it sounds uh, funny, but, you know, I mean it quite seriously that, you know, when you're driving down Travis Street, it's hard, it's very difficult to know that you're on your way to the University of Houston downtown because we don't have the appropriate signage, although we're working on that uh, at the very top of the roof. Uh, I don't see our VP for Finance Affairs in here, but she has promised me that by Christmas and when you come back after Christmas, you will no longer have to look for the University of Houston downtown. We have life-size letters that's gonna be at the very top of the building uh, in blue that says University of Houston downtown, that you'll be able to see it all the way back as you're traveling down. But you know, the, the, the bigger piece for me is just understanding the, the beauty as well of understanding how to get to different places within the downtown area where it's crystal clear that this is the way to do it. Uh, I tell folks jokingly, uh, Mayor and Chris, that when I, and not so jokingly, it's actually earnest, that my first three weeks here, if it weren't for campus police, I don't know how the hell I would have ever gotten to my office <laughs> because it's, this building is so doggone complex that it's difficult for people to find their way. Uh, and so we're definitely working on wayfinding in that way. But you know, how do we make sure that UHD not only asserts itself in terms of its programs and uh, its best practices that it's got, but also asserts itself in helping the community, the larger community, to know why it's so important, higher education so important to the downtown area. Uh, and there are lots of ways that, that we can do that. Uh, certainly, I will say that when we look at the public safety side, 
Uh, I'm really proud of the work that we have done in the area of criminal justice. Um, uh, the two people seated to my left probably do realize that University of Houston downtown has the only criminal justice program in the city of Houston, uh, both at a baccalaureate and master's level. But also, it really emphasizes through a lot of the work that we do, uh, not only within the criminal justice program, but also with the police academy, um, as well as with our own campus police officers who are also HPD police officers, that they really spend a lot of time on the notion of safety. Uh, we, we recently had a conference here um, that was open to the large, larger community. It was a packed house because people are very concerned about safety in the downtown area. Uh, and that particular conference really showed some great strategies through the voices of those who deliver safety on a regular basis of all the things that we can do collectively to improve safety conditions uh, in the downtown area and beyond. I agree with the mayor when he said that there's an interrelationship amongst the three things that were mentioned there about public safety um, as well as homelessness and beautification. On the homelessness front, I say that you know it's hard to talk about homelessness and, and first of all with the great work that the city has done in this area without also being very mindful of mental health. Um, and so we see that every single day as we drive to this campus. Um, and not only see it, but interact with it, right? Um, and trying to find ways that we can really provide more resources around mental health um, and also suicide prevention, which is very prevalent in this area where we are here at UHD, uh, because it matters to us not only in terms of the community approach, but also it matters to us in terms of our mission, in terms of who we are, the care that we give to our students and our faculty and staff, that it's not just contained within this building, it actually extends outward as well to make sure that everyone knows that this is a place, not only that they belong, but a place where they, they can thrive and really know that they are valued. Um, and so, I will say to you, uh, Mayor, that one of the things that I'm most proud of is that you know, we have had, and this campus community have heard me say this, we have had a number of suicide attempts um, and regrettably successful suicides since I have been here at UHD, and it has really boggled my mind. I, I, it, and while I say that none of those have been specific to UHD campus constituents, it still bothers me to no end to know that that number has been so high. The one attempt that actually was not an attempt, it was successful, that really got my attention was we had a student, not a student, I'm sorry, an, an individual um, who hung himself um, on our campus on the, the walkway that, and the bike trail um, behind one of our buildings, there was a tree uh, and he regrettably hung himself there very, very early in the morning and our police officers were able to uh, recognize that it was a successful suicide. The young man had a bag, he left a bag, and um, in the bag, as the police officers searched it, they brought the note to me that the young man had written and the note simply said, God forgot about me. And it touched me so deeply. And I said, never again that we are going to find ourselves in a position where people feel that in any close proximity to this university, we don't want anyone to feel that they are forgotten. So the city partnered with us um, and we are working to uh, build programming uh, around suicide prevention in the downtown area. Um, we see it so commonly here that I don't want it to become something that's naturalized, that we think that it's okay. Uh, it's not okay, uh, but with the help of the city, we really are moving forward on that front. And in my mind, again, none of this work that we can do around beautification is going to matter if we don't address some of these other issues that we're talking about around homelessness, around mental health, around public safety, that they all have to work synergistically to create a better, beautiful corridor here in the downtown area. Okay. 
Uh, so not to be redundant, but there's certainly an interrelationship between these three topics. Um, and, and I want to start on public safety because we've been doing um, some deeper research on public safety specific to how Houstonians feel about public safety in downtown. Um, and, it's, and it's quite revealing when you look at what the major drivers are for individuals who perceive downtown to be unsafe. The number one reason is that people feel alone. They feel vulnerable. They don't see other folks like them when they are walking through downtown. And that is, that is very much an impact of, of decades of a design orientation towards moving vehicles as fast as possible into and out of downtown. And so we've created a, a relationship between patronizers of downtown where they come to a thing as quickly as possible and then leave as quickly as possible. Um, and, and that's a challenge for us, and that's something that we're not going to fix overnight. Um, but that is really thinking about how we encourage more lingering, how we extend the stay of individuals so that they're not downtown for a single purpose, but it is a, a broader existence. And, and I think that there is 50 different ways to solve that riddle, but um, you know, one of them is gets back to residential density. Uh, Dr. Blanchard, we would love to see some students on, on campus that uh, maybe some campus housing or something like that would be fantastic for downtown. Um, Say it again, we were gonna, we're gonna record this and share it with our chancellor <laughs> and our board. We would love to have some, some student housing in, in downtown. Uh, we, remember we have five million square feet of, of empty office space. Uh, uh, <laughs> literally a mic drop. <laughs> Uh, you know, a couple other things, you know, there's also, of course, a vulnerability. It extends into the evening hours, and so pedestrian lighting is also very important. Um, and so we are completing a study right now. Next year, we'll begin implementation on, on some very, uh, really great opportunities to improve public safety, which will also have wayfinding benefits. So the three of us partnered last year on a, a fabulous uh, mural program. We introduced 31 murals throughout downtown. Many of those murals have um, a, a, a wayfinding capacity. Uh, whenever I see that young boy Houston on Main Street, as I'm walking up Main Street, I know exactly where I am. I know what direction I'm going. And we can use public art to help to reinforce our understanding of where we are in place, uh, particularly because we don't have topography and we have such an intact urban street grid, which does not allow a lot of reveals to happen organically that, that you experience in a lot of other cities. Um, then transitioning to talk about homelessness, I mean, homelessness is the greatest example of collaboration and the impact of collaboration and partnership. And just to pull up the curtain a little bit, just so that folks know about really one of the ways that that happens is uh, there is a group of, of 30 different organizations that meet monthly. And this began right before COVID um, set in. Um, and, and they are the leaders of every organization that deals with homelessness, from mental health to the city to the county and others. And this is so critical because you have individuals who put aside their egos, put aside their individual opinions and say, what can we agree that success looks like? How can we acknowledge where there are fissures and breakdowns in our system and how do we repair those in such a way that we're not stepping on each other's toes, but we're helping lead this structural system in a different direction that approve, improves outcomes. Um, and that level of collaboration is only possible in a city like Houston where you have a, a strong mayor form of government, uh, which is immensely efficient to be able to move things forward. But then also you've got a high level of pragmatism in the private sector that basically says, you know, a good idea is a good idea, you know, and, and let's move on a good idea. Uh, and so those things come together to help to really ensure that with limited resources, we're able to agree on what success looks like and then organize ourselves around like, how do we each play our independent roles in producing something that is a broader production that we can all be proud of in the end. Um, lastly, around, around beautification, and, and this is something that I think Houston is second to none for major American cities. Um, you know, it's, it's one of our programs that cleans the sidewalks, does all the power washing. We, we even pick up the trash from businesses in downtown. We maintain the public realm. We plant hundreds of, th of thousands of flowers. We trim the trees, yada, yada. We do all of that stuff for downtown, and, and, it's, and it's a privilege to be able to do it all. Um, you know, I do think that there are continuing opportunities for um, really retrofitting the public realm because it's not trash. Like, trash is not our challenge. Um, it is the building conditions. It is things like uh, prohibitions on certain kinds of signage. Um, there are other sort of material challenges that limit our ability to have an appealing public realm. 
And that appeal is critical, because as we think, and going back to that vibrancy issue, vibrancy is the panacea for your public safety problems. We don't actually have numerical public safety problems. It's not an unsafe district. What we have is perception issues, right? And the more regular folks we can get out walking in the environment, the more it's gonna overcome some of those perceptions. And we can also do that by making the walking experience more interesting, right? And so how do we retrofit, redesign, reconfigure the way that buildings relate to the public realm? That's a big part of helping to create an interesting experience because if in two or three blocks your eyes don't have anything to do, you get bored, right? And you start thinking about how you wish you drove or you'd taken some other way to get there. But if you can create a fascinating experience that allows your imagination to be captured and allows you to escape your own thoughts for a moment, that's what helps to incentivize walking. And, and those are the kinds of things that we're working on that really helps to underscore the interrelationship between the three items. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Turner, as your term comes to an end, do you see any missed or incomplete partnership opportunities? And what's your hope for the future of downtown Houston? Well, you, 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 you never say mission accomplished. Uh, I don't care who you are as the mayor of the city of Houston, there's always something to do, okay? So you never get it done. Uh, what you hope is that you can pass the baton to the next person and you're further ahead than when you started. Um, so you, there will always be a need for collaboration and collaboration building. That's never done. As businesses come into, for example, the downtown area, uh, you have to reach out to them and invite them to be a part. Uh, for businesses that already exist, for USD that's already here, um, Collect collectively, we can all do more. Um, and there is no question in my mind uh, that, for example, UHD, uh, there are businesses um, that can partner with UHD and to work to find ways to encourage students here and the faculty uh, to come and patronize them. Uh, it would be good, for example, for, at the, for the Rockets, for example, or for Minute Maid or Houston Dash, since they're all downtown, uh, to carry UHD logo, just because we're all downtown, uh, to, to show that collaboration and that partnership, okay? Since we all are downtown base. So, you know, uh, and there are other ways. Uh, the city of Houston, for example, in our Higher Houston Youth Program and Internship Program. And we can build on that. Um, this year, when it comes to the Internship Program, we got up to hiring 20,000 folk for the summer. Okay. But really, that number can grow to even more than that. Uh, so there'll be opportunities on that front. So it's never where I don't leave saying, okay, I've done it all. Far from the case. Um, Mental health funding, I agree with you. Uh, there are things that we can do locally, working with our nonprofits in, the, in this area. But for, for, for the people that are living on our streets now, in large part, it's chronic homelessness. It's mental behavioral health issues. And you need substantially more mental health funding. Well, that comes from the state coming down. Because uh, you can't address their holistic problems without that mental health funding. And quite frankly, and it needs to be provided not when someone is on the street, but when, they are, uh, when it's starting to occur and before they go through the pipeline and find themselves on the street. So we need to intervene in their lives a lot sooner, a lot earlier, and not when they're on the street. In terms, for example, of uh, people who um, feel as though God has abandoned them. Uh, it is important, for example, to create a city uh, that's a very caring and compassionate city. I tell people all the time, I can, I'm looking at you right now, but I don't know your story. I'm looking at you right now, you look great but you never know what people are going through. And if you ask people how they're doing, they'll say, fine, I'm doing fine. 
because that's an automatic response. But you don't know their story. So we have to create a city uh, that's compassionate, that's understanding, uh, where we are reducing the toxicity and the negativity that's in the air. Um, all of those are component parts that you know, we have to contribute to. So um, my term is ending. And as I say um, on December 31st, I think you said January the 2nd, but, which is true, it's January 2nd, but on December 31st, um, this cruise ship is going to die. <laughs> and this captain is getting off. And then on January 1st, because you really sworn in January 1st, on January the 1st, the cruise ship would take off again with the new captain. And the work continues. So we've come a long way, we've done a lot. I mean, I grew up in this city, and as I said before, 5, 5.30, dead. But I was here on Sunday night, um, this past Sunday, and there was a lot of activity downtown at Sunday night, which is, which was good, nice. So, and then we just have to work in a sense to get people from underground in the tunnel system and above ground. But they go underground, number one, because it's hot. But number two, that's where a lot of the retail is, underground. So we have to redesign the city as we move forward, where you have retail, where when you're walking through, then you, you, know, you might want to go in. We have way too much office space at 530 that's empty on the first floor. It's just empty space. So we have to find a way to reimagine that space. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been a wonderful ride. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but the city will move forward and, uh, and we'll be in good hands. Thank you, Mayor Turner. All right, next question is for President Blanchard. Mayor Turner uh, had some powerful things to say about uh, partnership opportunities in Houston. What's your vision for partnering with residential and business communities in downtown Houston? I think I've given hints already. You know, obviously the experiential learning component connected with our businesses, also in terms of understanding the employability of so many of our students uh, after they graduate, because we know that they graduate ready uh, with knowledge and skills to go directly into the workforce. Uh, also in terms of really f in understanding the sense of community. Um, and I think that these two gentlemen have referred to that in their comments here, that we really are neighbors and we really do care about each other. And it's a little strange because I, I use the analogy all the time, for those of you who've been in my office, you get a, a beautiful view of the downtown area. And it, it, it feels so close that you can touch it, but I tell folks that we're still so far. Uh, because we've got so much more work to do to make sure that we are connected um, and uh, as one, not only with those businesses, but also with the communities, the neighborhoods, um, and how we bring it all together that in, in such a way that we really understand and know each other and care for each other and help to build each other. So those are some of the things I can think of right away. I know we're running out of time. Let me just mention one quick thing. Uh, Mayor, you mentioned the, the fact of uh, ensuring that maybe we can have our logos um, and on different buildings uh, before the captain leaves the ship. Uh, we are, we're about to celebrate our 50th year anniversary and we love to put signs on the light posts uh, down Main Street. So I'll be coming to you to see if we can make some of that happen, happen as we are able to uh, get our name out there before the 50th year anniversary. Oh, I have to give you a proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> When is it? When is the fiftieth? It's a. Um, it's actually we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate the whole year. It's it's uh, in 2024, all of 2024. But the actual day is in April of 2024. Is that right? The founding. Yes. So we'll be 50 years old. Well, I may take that away from the next mayor and <laughs> and do it early. Yeah. <laughs> here, 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 here. <laughs> we're getting some business done today. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna ask one last question to the group and then we're gonna to move to closing statements just for time's sake. 
So let's shift gear and talk a little bit about the looming TxDOT project. What do you foresee as the impact on downtown Houston? What are the opportunities? What makes you pause? I've always said if, if it's done correctly, it can be transformational. Um, and when you're taking I-45 around, and I think it will go around UHD, when it, it will go around UHD, it can be a very connecting, connecting uh, influence. Um, and for me, the focus is not on the freeway construction. The focus is on connectivity. The focus is on uh, building, putting in more caps, green space. Okay, uh, for me, the focus is on um, where you take the Pierce elevator and you can turn it into like a Highline Park with a lot of things that are taking place on, on that front. Um, so I think that there are some golden opportunities there to enhance a sense of community when there's a lot of, um, where the highway has served to divide, okay? Um, you know, I think there's opportunities to connect Freedmanstown for Ward area, uh, the East End by building that cap on the other side of George R. Brown and having more parking green space. There would be a very a much more uh, uh, sense of connection. And then the plan that we are doing with opening the convention center. Well, the convention center will look totally different. Instead of it being one big convention center, there'll be like three sections with the front door as well as the back door, and then you'll have the park space on the back side as well as uh, Discovery Green on the front side. So there are a lot of opportunities there. Uh, quite frankly, I'm, look I'm looking forward to it, but it is going to require hands-on. By the next you know, mayor, city council, all the stakeholders, it's gotta, you have to be hands-on or it can get away from you. So if you're hand-on, intentional, see the connectivity to the parks, how it connects with metro and transit, uh, those elements, and where the focus is not just on building a freeway that's going around, but quite frankly, in the end of the day, I know the way I have seen it in, in my vision is that the freeway kind of disappears and everything else evolves. If it's, if it's done in that way, it'll be a tremendous plus. Thank you. So the, the mayor is exactly right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a profound opportunity to, to really reconnect neighborhoods uh, with downtown. Uh, when the existing highways were installed 60 years ago, um, it, it severed and destroyed neighborhoods. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to go into helping to repair and, and reestablish those connections. Uh, the, the, the caps and the open spaces, they help to accomplish that, but I think there's also going to be a relearning and a re-understanding of how downtown relates to its adjacent neighborhoods uh, because we've literally been walled off. I mean, the, the, the existing elevated highways might as well be a moat um, that, that, that divides communities, and so this is really an opportunity to, to level that relationship and, and to start to rebuild. But, you know, the, the, the piece that I'm most excited about is, is thinking about when you break down those walls, what happens in those areas, particularly like Edo and Midtown, um, where we don't have land use controls you know, in, in Houston. And so what, how does downtown look 30 or 40 years from now? You could almost start to see it beginning to swell and becoming larger, um, particularly with the investment that's gonna be happening there around the, the GRB. Um, and the center of gravity of downtown starts to move east. And so that's terribly exciting to think that, you know, 20, 30 years from now, where Shell Stadium is now, wouldn't feel as though it is removed from downtown, but it's actually a part of it. Um, that's where I see us going. Everything has been said. The, the, the connective piece is what's really important to our university. And we're clear about the fact that this would the, the, the highway improvement project, uh, if done carefully, and I know that it will be based on all that I hear, will for the first time create an opportunity for our university to have a cohesive campus. Um, that not only cohesive in terms of bringing us together as a campus community and widening our footprint, 
but when we talk about how we see ourselves connected with the actual community, both business and neighborhood community, this will provide us that opportunity to do that. There'd be no other opportunity we would have outside of this in order to get that done, which then allows us to focus in on housing, not only for students, but faculty and staff as well, which allows us to focus in on health services, both mental health and physical health, that's community-based and driven, uh, which allows us to also think more about the retail component, right, and ensuring that those things that we don't see, like right under our noses, like a pharmacy or something of that nature, that we can be working to make sure that that happens. Um, and that most importantly for this university as well, is creating more opportunities uh, for students, not only in terms of on the employability side and the exper experiential learning side, uh, but also looking at it in terms of how much innovation and entrepreneurial experience that many of our students have and to help to build that and to move it forward. That's where I see the future of UHD with respect to this highway improvement project. And let me just say that under the current configuration of I-45, um, it causes UHD to somewhat feel, somewhat be disconnected, so to speak. And so with the, with the, with the freeway going around, it does kind of open the door and bring UHD even more into this sense of community. And you cannot look at I-45 without taking a look at what's gonna be happening with um, Houston First and the convention center down on that end and the Buffalo Bayou project, which is going to open up that, the whole east end from the east end to uh, Fifth Ward. That's going to open up quite a bit. So when you take all of, three, all of these three things, uh, three things together, you're going to see a much more reinvigorated inner core that's really going to be um, look different than what it looks today and quite more inviting and a lot more uh, parks and green space that's coming. Thank you. I have two brief things to say. One, I apologize, we're not gonna have time for Q&A today. It's been such an engaging and thoughtful and exciting conversation. I know personally I'm very excited about future partnerships and how we can work together. Uh, but I do wanna give each panelist a chance for a closing statement. So as we wrap up today's UHD's presidential lecture series, I'd like to start with Mayor Turner for a closing statement. Well, let me thank you for, for having me. Uh, my closing statement will be vote. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I will tell you, leadership matters. Leadership matters. Uh, and it starts with voting and making an educated decision. And it is important uh, because the, the question is, do we go forward or do we like leadership that kind of takes us backwards? And you have to make that decision. A leadership does matter. So please exercise your right to vote. And then there's an initiative uh, for the Harris Health Center, um, which is a huge initiative. When we start talking about health care, that's important. I hope you will support uh, that proposition uh, on, the, on the ballot. Uh, but, but do exercise your right to vote, and thank you for allowing me to be your mayor. So Mayor, you're right. Leadership matters. And thank you for eight years of leadership uh, for the city of Houston. While we've only known each other for a couple of years, uh, you have demonstrated to me that you are willing to step out there and lead when it is time to lead. Um, and I think that is absolutely critical. Um, and I would encourage you all, as we talk about the downtown that we want to build together, your voices matter in these, in these decisions, in these processes, because if you do not participate, if you do not vote, right, if you don't participate with local government, if you do not participate in opportunities to shape the public realm, to talk about these changes and how we make these changes together, your voices don't matter, they won't be heard. People will make assumptions about what you might have said rather than hearing your voice say them because what we're talking about right now is profound changes to our city. We're talking about things that are a departure from the way we approach city building in the past and what it will take to get us forward. And so if these things matter, if these are the kinds of places that we wanna build, we need you all to participate and it starts with voting in November. Thank you. 
my final comment is, is brief, and that is the whole is greater than its parts. And if anything that we walk away from today is really understanding how we are much better and stronger when we work together, uh, as opposed to the divisions that we in siloed approach that is often taken. And I say that even in terms of the, what you have heard from the individuals that sit before you today, um, and using the terms compassion and passion, but recognizing that they are models of both compassion and passion and really wanting to make sure that community matters. So I just wanna say thank you all for being here today. Just thank the two of you. Mayor, I recognize that this is probably the last time that you'll be coming to UHD as mayor uh, to talk before us. And, and uh, in that role, I just wanna say thank you so very much. You have been an absolute stalwart, uh, stalwart uh, uh, advocate for the University of Houston downtown, a support to me as the leader of this campus uh, and for the overall community. And Chris, I'll say that you know you have never told us no on, on anything uh, that we've asked um, and that with your leadership, I am confident that the downtown of Houston, Texas is on its way forward. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Blanchard. And thank you, panelists, Dean. Thank you, Mayor. I think our president said it well. We are going to miss your support of UHD. It's been very evident these past eight years. Um, just recently, as you know, we named you a friend of UHD at our alumni and friends dinner. And, you know, once you're a friend of UHD, it's for life. <laughs> it's for life. So we um, appreciate your offer of a proclamation and we may well take you up, and you, I believe you'll have a lot of support for that. So we welcome you. Thank you. It, the door is always open. And thank you, Chris, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, that concludes our program. Have a great rest of your afternoon. <laughs>